It is Monday, May 18th. Welcome to CGN News. Tributes continue to pour in for Oliver Clark, former Gleaner Company and Jamaica National Group chairman, who passed away on Saturday night after a long battle with cancer. He was 75. Clark had a major role in shaping the landscape of media in Jamaica and created one of the largest media conglomerates in the region. He also served as president of the private sector organization of Jamaica between 2002 and 2003 president of the Inter-American Press Association, and a member of the board of directors for several major private sector entities. Airline and cruise ship visitors to Jamaica may be required to present medical certificates of a negative COVID-19 test to enter the island when the country reopens its borders for tourism. The medical certificate should be no older than 76 hours. This measure is among a number of proposed protocols now on the table for implementation. All airline passengers departing Jamaica should also be tested prior to boarding and their temperature checked by the thermal scanners. If their temperatures are above normal, they will be denied boarding. Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness stated that there would be a serious breach of good faith if Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines intends to sail to Jamaica without notice or approval. Adventure of the Seas has 1,044 ship workers aboard. The vessel is due to arrive in Falmouth today and will disembark five days later. Holness is maintaining that up to this point, no date for arrivals has been agreed. According to the Prime Minister, discussions are still ongoing and no formal approval has been given yet. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Rowley, said he rejects being called a liar by the Trinidad Guardian newspaper. A debate ensues as to whether or not Trinidad and Tobago played a role in getting Venezuela to break a United States-imposed economic sanction. The government has publicly denied any involvement in the sale of oil to Venezuela, insisting that the oil had been sold to a refinery in the Dutch Caribbean island of Aruba. In an editorial Thursday, the Trinidad Guardian newspaper said that the emergence of a document showed National Security Minister Stuart Young gave an exemption to Rodriguez's delegation to enter Trinidad and Tobago when the country is under a lockdown. The newspaper said the letter, which was circulating on social media, has not been denied by Minister Young nor the government and is so potentially damning. It cannot go unanswered by the administration. The editorial noted the seriousness of this issue cannot be understated because if this country broke U.S. sanctions or willingly sold fuel to Venezuela, there is likely to be a price to be paid. Barbados is battling an almost 40 percent unemployment rate. But with the country set to reopen more businesses from next week, fewer people are expected to be on the bread line as the country progresses through its planned phases. Out of 140,000 persons in the Barbadian workforce, a little over 36,000 have claimed unemployment benefits from the National Insurance Scheme, NIS. Prime Minister Mia Motley said job creation is key in moving the phased reopening process forward. She contended that Barbados may restore employment for two-thirds of the population, while the other third of the population will be supported by the government. She made the comments as she hoped that through the restrictions, through the country's protocols, Barbados can put people back to work on a weekly basis without compromising the gains that the country has made with respect to COVID-19. Now let's take a look overseas. The mayor of Brazil's largest city, Sao Paulo, has said its health system could collapse as demands grow for emergency beds to deal with coronavirus cases. Bruno Covas said the city's public hospitals had reached 90 percent capacity and could run out of space in two weeks. He accused those who flouted lockdown rules of playing a Russian roulette with people's lives. Sao Paulo is one of the country's worst hit regions with almost 3,000 deaths so far. Brazil's far-right President Jair Bolsonaro has been strongly criticized both at home and abroad for his handling of the country's escalating coronavirus crisis. He defied global health advice on social distancing on Sunday when he posed for photographs with supporters and children in the capital of Brasilia. On Saturday, Brazil overtook Spain and Italy to become the country with the fourth largest number of infections. Nigeria has impounded a British aircraft that is alleged to have disregarded a ban aimed at curbing the spread of coronavirus. Aviation Minister Hadi Sarika said the plane operated by Flare Jet was allowed to fly humanitarian aid but had contravened a ban that has been imposed on almost all passenger flights. Describing Flare Jet's actions as callous, he said the crew was being questioned and maximum penalties could follow. The company has not commented on the seizure. 
Nigeria's ban on passenger flights except for returning nationals is due to run until June 4. China's ambassador to Israel, Du Wei, has been found dead in his apartment north of Tel Aviv. The official said Israeli police had launched an investigation but initial findings suggested no foul play. Mr. Du, 57, was appointed ambassador in February, having previously served as envoy to Ukraine. The ambassador was married and had a son, but his family had still to join him in Israel. Israel's Channel 12 TV, quoting unnamed medical sources, said initial indications were that Mr. Du had died in his sleep of natural causes. There was no immediate comment on Mr. Du's death from Chinese officials. Kenyan flower farms have started reopening, offering hope to thousands of workers who have been laid off or furloughed. Kenya is the world's fourth largest exporter of cut flowers and earns around $1 billion every year from the industry. But it has been badly hit by a global fall in demand for flowers leading to farm closures and huge job losses. With many countries in Kenya's key markets now emerging from lockdown, the flower farms have started to slowly re-engage with international markets. This will also be a significant boost for a struggling economy paralyzed by the coronavirus. That's it for the CGN News. Thanks for tuning in. I am Cynthia Shea Clark.